Om Shanti. Special greetings for the festival of Rakshabandhan. It's a festival that is loved by everyone in India, but also wherever Indians have migrated abroad outside India, um, they also carry this festival with them. But usually what happens is that they say that if a sister ties a raki on her brother, then he's going to be able to protect her. And I was 14 when I'd gone back to India on holiday after being in London. And I thought to myself, when my cousins told me I have to tie a raki on my brother, I said to them, but he's younger than me. And at that time, he was shorter than me. Now he's taller. But at that time, he was shorter than me. And I said, you know, how is he going to protect me? And they said, oh, you don't have to understand, just do it. And it's fun. So I went along with the game. But in fact, it has a very profound understanding behind it, a great deal of significance. And if you think about this word raksha, raksha means protection. And so the raki that we tie, the sacred thread, that is the raki, the symbol for that protection. But God is also known as not just rakshak, but also shikshak, which means teacher. And so when we follow God's teachings in our lives, as a result of that, we experience protection that God is able to give us. It's not only women who need protection. It's our dear brothers, men also who need protection in today's world. And the protection is not a question of human beings, but I need protection from lust, ego, anger, greed, and attachment, because these truly are my enemies. And so the festival of Rakshabandhan coming on the full moon night every year is a recognition that this aspect of being able to conquer the vices is that which truly will bring us protection. And immediately following Rakshabandhan comes the festival of Janamashtami, the celebration of Krishna's birth. When we've been able to finish the battles with the vices and experience God's protection from all negativity, then surely this world can become Satyug the age of truth, the golden age, wherein we'll see Sri Krishna taking birth once again. And I believe that the golden age, Satyug, is not so far away at all. It just needs a little bit of a shift of human consciousness. So God's teachings are, if you remember you're a soul, then you take power from God in that awareness of soul consciousness so that you're able to deal with all of these vices. And that teaching from God, remember that you're a soul and connect with me, connect with one, man manabho. These perhaps are the most important teachings of the Gita. And so as we follow them and understand them, we begin to understand how under the parenthood of God, the mother and father, all of us, not just one brother, one sister, but the whole world family. Being a family, truly, we are all brothers and sisters, or we could even say, in terms of the consciousness of the soul, we are all brothers. Rakshabandhan, the bondage of protection. Why should there be this word bondage? Because it's a reminder that I'm tying myself in the bond, the bondage of God's instructions and teachings. It's a sweet bondage that's going to liberate me from all bondages forever. When I understand that we're part of one family, what should our relationship with each other be like? It should be filled with respect, with love, and most of all, purity. Within siblings, there is purity. There is love. But yet, when I recognize that everyone is my brother and sister, then there's a tremendous vision of 
being able to see the other as a soul, my sister or my brother. And in that awareness of our eternal relationship of soul to soul, we talk about the brotherhood of humanity. Well, this is the true brotherhood based on spiritual understanding. My relationship with every human being is that of soul consciousness, brother to brother, without any awareness of gender, but it's brother to brother. And in this awareness of brotherhood, there is peace, there is respect, there is love, there is benevolence, there's a concern to be able to help each other, there is compassion, there is kindness. Is it possible for us to revive this ancient tradition here and now so that we again together celebrate with this consciousness and awareness and we're able to manifest that in our lives? And do you know what will happen? Satyug will come, the golden age will come, a world in which truly there will be happiness and peace and prosperity for all. And so Raksha Bandhan is a time to make a promise for purity and being able to see everyone with that vision of brotherhood. Can you think about all the problems that would be eliminated from the world if we were to change our vision? When my awareness changes, Smriti, then with that awareness, my attitude changes, Ritti, and I recognize who you are as my brother. My vision, Drishti, changes towards you. I'm not interested in your physical position or possessions or anything external. I'm connecting with you on the level of soul to soul, and we're able to have that experience of a divine connection with each other, and we see each other with that vision of brotherhood, of purity. And as a result of that, Kriti, my actions begin to change. And as a result of that, Sanskriti, our culture changes, and we're able to have non-violence as our basic culture. And then, Srishti, the world also changes. So there's a straight line connection between my consciousness, my attitude, my vision, my actions, the culture that we create and the world that we create together. It's a very beautiful understanding that together, through this brotherly love, we can actually create a better world for all of us, not just one or a few people, but the whole world is my family. And I extend my vision and my love towards everyone so that truly there can be justice and truth for all. And it can be a state in which there is equilibrium, equality, and happiness for everyone. The Raksha Bandhan is a beautiful festival, and I hope that it will truly become a universal festival so that Together we create that better world in which all of us are able to experience oneness and happiness together. But it begins with the recognition of the One, the Supreme, the Source of all positive attributes, and knowing that my eternal bond is first with that One, and as a result of that bond, then there's the bond amongst all of us together. Traditionally, Having tied the raki, we share sweets. That's always welcome, but it's a reminder. Let my life be filled with the sweetness of God's love and love for the whole of humanity. And then I can share that sweetness with each one, whoever it is, whoever I may meet. And then we also usually share a fruit. A reminder that as we sow good seeds, good karma, the fruits will be very sweet and will be bringing happiness to all. So, in essence, the purity of thoughts, vision, but also the purity in my diet 
Is my diet plant-based? If it's not, then I'm causing hurt to other species. So let me switch for, the, for spiritual reasons, but also for environmental reasons and for health reasons. Plant-based diet is definitely the way to go forward. And so purity in my life, in my dietary habits, but also purity in what I expose myself to. What am I watching? What am I listening to? Is it helping me elevate my thoughts or are my thoughts coming down onto a gross level? So whatever level it is you wish to celebrate Rakshabandhan, do it. Do it with that heart of wanting to have some aspect of purity, maybe the whole package, but maybe not. Even just a little bit of purity can go a long way. Thank you for your attention. Om Shanti.